TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel and the United Arab Emirates have officially opened the gateways for civilian travel between the two countries. After two and a half years of incarceration in an Iranian jail over false accusations of espionage, British-Australian academic Kylie Moore Gilbert lands in Canberra. A trial has commenced in the Belgian city of Antwerpen for an Iranian diplomat and three other Iranians over an attempted bombing attack in France in 2018. A little over two and a half months after Israel and the United Arab Emirates signed the historic Abraham Peace Accords under U.S. auspices, the two countries have now opened their gateways for civilian travel. The first to seize the fruits of the newly opened flight route, the Emirati Fly Dubai Airline, touched down in Israel's Tel Aviv International Airport yesterday, where a special ceremony was held for the first of many trips. In attendance, Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu praised the historic moment as pivotal for the future relations between the two Middle Eastern countries. This is a moment of history because this is the first commercial flight between Dubai and Israel. There will be many more going both directions, but you can only be first once. And this is a, this is a pivotal moment because we're changing history. It's not that we're marching forward, we're flying with breakneck speed into a new era that is now clearly uh, changing the Middle East, changing the future of our peoples. They've embraced it with unbelievable enthusiasm. Citizens of the United Arab Emirates and Israel are now able to visit each other's country without applying for a visa before traveling. The move expects to serve business leaders from both countries as Jerusalem and Dubai seek to deepen cooperation in all sectors of mutual benefit. There's a lot for us to do here. I wanted to relax, go to the Dead Sea, but I barely have time for that. So they're keeping me busy and I will be visiting this country probably once every month or maybe twice every month and a half. So we'll see whenever I get a chance. I'll be here at least uh, every three, four weeks. We are very excited to, to be in uh, Tel Aviv as a first, uh, you know, uh, trip or uh, first uh, flight. And I, I think we will be doing it on a regular basis. I hope so. And uh, let's see what adventure we see here in the country. Turning to Australia, where after two and a half years of incarceration in an Iranian jail over a false accusation of espionage, British-Australian academic Kylie Moore Gilbert landed in Canberra early this morning. Moore Gilbert was detained in Iran in 2018 and sentenced to 10 years in prison on espionage charges because her partner happened to be an Israeli national. تاریخ سپتامبر 2018 آمدم به ایران آمدم ایران دو سال و سه ماه پیش Following extensive negotiations between Canberra authorities and Tehran, Australia managed to secure Moore Gilbert's release in exchange for three members of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard who had been detained in Thailand over plotting to bomb Israeli diplomatic missions. Announcing her release, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison declared it to be a miracle after diligently praying for her return. We kept up the hope, we kept up the prayers too. And as I said on, the, on morning television this morning, um, I, I've always believed in miracles and I'm just so thankful for this one as well. Well, Moore Gilbert, a specialist in Middle East politics at the University of Melbourne, was successfully released from wrongful detention in the Islamic Republic of Iran over allegedly spying for Israel. There are many more foreign nationals who continue to be wrongfully incarcerated by the Ayatollah regime. Among others, a dual Swedish-Iranian national, Professor Ahmad Reza Jalali, has been sentenced to death by Iran's Islamic judiciary over fabricated claims of espionage for Israel. 
Jalali, formerly based in Stockholm, where he worked at the Medical Karolinska Institute, was arrested during a visit to Iran in April of 2016. He was subsequently found guilty of passing information about two Iranian nuclear scientists to Israel's Mossad intelligence agency that led to their assassination. In contrast, Jalali insists that he is being punished for refusing to spy for the Islamic Revolutionary Guards while working in Europe. Meanwhile, Swedish Foreign Minister Ann Linde released a statement on her Twitter page in which she wrote, quote, In the light of information that Iran may have planned to carry out the death penalty against the Swedish citizen Jalali, I spoke today with Iran's Foreign Minister Zarif. Sweden condemns the death penalty and works to ensure that the verdict against Jalali is not enforced. In response to this statement, which came after a phone conversation with her Iranian counterpart, Muhammad Javad Zarif, the Iranian foreign ministry released a statement saying, Unfortunately, the information of the Swedish authorities regarding the situation of Mr. Jalali, who is in prison due to security crimes, is incomplete and wrong. It further insisted that the judiciary of the Islamic Republic of Iran is independent, and any interference in the issuance of execution of judicial rulings is rejected and unacceptable. In other yet related news, a trial has commenced in the Belgian city of Antwerpen for an Iranian diplomat and three other Iranians over terror charges. Belgian prosecutors charged Vienna-based diplomat Asadullah Sadi and the three others with planning a bombing attack in a 2018 meeting in France of an exiled Iranian opposition group, which was attended by U.S. President Donald Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. According to French intelligence officials, Assadi was the third counselor at Iran's embassy in the Austrian capital Vienna, in charge of intelligence in southern Europe, and was acting on orders from Tehran. And while prosecutors have attained condemning evidence of the Iranian plot, Tehran authorities continue to dismiss the charges as baseless. Nevertheless, the Iranian diplomat's lawyer said that Assadi is demanding to exercise his diplomatic immunity. My, my client uh, asked me to represent him today. Uh, he let me know that he has the fullest respect for these judges, but as he considers that he should benefit from immunity, they are not allowed to judge him. Also because his uh, defense rights were not respected since the beginning of the procedure. That is how he feels and that is what also I will say. Uh, that's another reason why he will not be there today. But he has the right to, present it, to be represented by his lawyer, so that's what I will do. It is important to highlight that while the three other charged Iranians were caught red-handed with half a kilo of TATP explosives and a detonator, they continue to plead their innocence. So she, she said that she is completely innocent. She never, she never wanted to kill someone. So she's saying, okay, I was there, but I didn't know what could happen, but I'm, I'm sure I had never the intention to kill. A human being, never. She was arrested with a bomb in her car. That we will see, we're going to discuss. There was a bomb, but was it so big, as they say? This discussion, I will make it in court. It is important to highlight that the Ayatollah regime has been blamed by European nations over repeated activities against Iranian dissidents, including two killings in the Netherlands in 2015 and 2017, and a foiled assassination attempt in Denmark. Iran has repeatedly denied any involvement, however, saying the accusations were intended to damage EU-Iran relations. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Trinidad and Tobago in prayer for its salvation and peace alongside prayers for our persecuted brethren throughout Africa, the Middle East and Far East, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom Mevorach, and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.